Hi, I'm Steve Halliday, and in this video I'm going to show you the process for developing software for your Arduino microcontroller. This will lay the foundation, and then in later videos we'll show you how to specifically program the motors and the sensors for your autonomous vehicle. Let's get started. Let's say that it's just you, and your computer, and your Arduino, and you want to use these tools to be able to figure out how to write some software for your Arduino, how to control things with it. What do we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is interact with an editor kind of program. This can be a simple program such as Notepad, which allows us to type in source code that is our program that controls the Arduino. Once we have the source code in place, then we need to run that file through a compiler program. This compiler translates our human readable source code into an object code file that the computer can read. Once we have the object code file, we can combine that with other library files using a linker program to create an executable file. The executable file is what will actually run on the Arduino. Finally, we'll take that executable file and we'll use an upload program to put that on the Arduino so that it can actually run on the Arduino. Now this looks like a lot of steps and a lot of complicated work, but fortunately, the Arduino people have combined that all into one simple program where we can take the Arduino app, we can integrate that with some library files, and using this Arduino app, which is considered to be an integrated development environment, we can actually write the code and do everything we need to do to upload the program to the Arduino. The first thing that we'll need to do is download the Arduino app. We can do that from the Arduino website here at this URL. You can scroll down here and you can find your operating system and install the software required for that. Then I'd suggest clicking on this next step link here. This will walk you through for your environment the various steps that you'll need to take to actually get the software working, installed, and, and up and running. And then the first thing you can do is you can take a look at this Blink example one thing that's nice about the Arduino app is that it comes with a lot of different examples for how to build software for your Arduino. It's a fairly simple app. There are lots of more sophisticated IDEs, but this one comes with a lot of things that will make it very easy to use. We see in this first example of the app here, they give us an example of how to blink an LED on our Arduino. Um, and the way these apps work, they're called sketches. A sketch is really just an Arduino app, but it has two main methods in it, the setup method and the loop method. When you run your application on the Arduino, the setup method gets called one time, and then the loop method gets called repeatedly after that. So you can do any initialization that you want to do in the setup method, and then you can do repeated types of things in your looping method here. In this example, in this blinking LED example that we see here, the pin mode says that I want to set pin 13 to be an output pin. You may remember that these pins can be either input or output pins, and so this tells the Arduino, let's use this as an output pin. And then in the looping section of the program here, we'll write a high value to that pin. In other words, we'll set that pin to be high. We'll delay for this is in milliseconds, so we'll delay for one second, as the comment here tells us. And then we'll write the same pin to be low, which will cause the LED to go off, and we'll delay for another second. Then next time the loop gets called again, the loop method gets called, it'll go through the same sequence, and it'll go over and over again. And so what you see is the pin with the LED going high, and then waiting for a second, and then going low, and then waiting for another second, and so on and so forth. When you first start the Arduino app, you'll probably get a blank sketch like I did here. But you can go up here and under File, you can look at examples. We can look at basic examples here. And here's the blink example that we showed in the previous section. And we see here that it looks just like it did in the example on the web page. We can play with this a little bit. First of all, before we do that though, let's actually run this on our Arduino. And the way to do that is we plug in the Arduino using the USB cord that came with it and we hit this button here and that will download it and get it running on the Arduino. 
And if you do that, you'll start to see that your Arduino blinks one second on, one second off. Then we can play with it a little bit just to make sure we know how the thing works. We can change this value, for example, to 5. This makes the Arduino stay, the LED on the Arduino stay lit for 5 seconds and then go off for 1 second. When we push the upload button here, this is what the Arduino looks like. We see that the receive and transmit LEDs on the left flutter a little bit as we transfer the program down to the Arduino, then one second on and one second off. So now when we change the delay to 2000 milliseconds, meaning that we have two seconds of on time and one second of off time, and we push the upload button here, this is what the Arduino looks like. Once again, we see the receive and transmit LEDs flutter a little bit, and then the LED associated with pin 13 goes on and off. Two seconds on, one second off. When we write software, we have to follow certain rules. These are called syntax rules, and they define what kinds of things we can write into our source file. We can't just write anything. For example, we do have to have this setup method. This is called a method here. And we also have to have this loop method. And we have to make sure that our curly braces are placed in the right place and they match. If we violate the syntax rules, for example, one of the syntax rules is that we need to end each line with a semicolon. So for example, if we don't end the line with a semicolon and we try to download the program, we see that we get an error down here. This is a syntax error and it tries to tell us what's wrong. We expected a semicolon before the digital wire line. In other words, this digital wire line, we needed a semicolon before it. So we put the semicolon back and we can continue on. Writing software can be a little bit challenging and it will require that you actually learn a language. This is a language in of itself for talking to the computer and you'll have to learn that. I'm not going to be able to cover all of C++ in this video, but you can find other tutorials online to help you learn these languages. Jamie also has a lot of good videos covering C++ as well. Probably the best way to approach the problem is to find some kind of a sketch that's fairly similar to the one that you're trying to build and then work from there. I'll also try to provide you with some source code that'll be helpful as well. So that wraps up our introduction for how to write software for the Arduino. I hope you've enjoyed this video. In the next videos, we'll get into more detail on specifically the kinds of programs we want to write for our autonomous vehicle.